the button and I wasn't ready. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. I can just throw you under the bus now. Yeah. <laughs> Quick, Fanta, you're on. Um, oh, it's the interval. Cool, because we, we don't have to come up with a topic. We can just riff on whatever. No, Joyce is running the ship on this one. Joyce is running the ship. There's questions. There's, there's need to knows. There's been Facebook requests. We'll all get into it. Hang tight, Misfits. Roll the credits. Let's go. Interval episode 55. Boom. From Sydney, Australia, all the way to Portland, USA, two misfits hang out after class to riff on the B-sides of professional life. These are your professional misfits. All the way from Sydney, Australia, I am your host, Christopher Sellers. And from Portland, Oregon, I'm Brody Ipox. And we are your professional misfits. We riff on the B-sides of professional life. And season five, Misfits, is brought to you by IGU, an old game with a new twist where modern innovation and nostalgia come together to bring you tag for today. So shout out to IGU for sponsoring the Misfits, being the first official sponsor of the Misfits, which is very, very, very cool. And we're very humbled and thankful. So yes. check them out, Misfits, because it's rad and it's a really cool fucking little app um all right all the promo shit out of the way brody how you doing man halfway through a season good um i had to do the sauna a little late today and i'm i'm looking flush in the camera and it's kind of bugging the shit out of me so i've got my fan just full blown <laughs> on me so, to hopefully halfway through the episode i don't look like i've fucking tomato if you're on spotify brody's looking a little toasty like he's been out in the sun he's got the white boy tan like straight yeah. across the nose so yep. Yep. <laughs> good for you bro good for you um i skipped a fire inspection so that's, i was gonna say know, how about you because you had people that were gonna raid the apartment or you know. you know how it is you get an email you get three phone calls and a text day of saying you must be home between these times and so i'm home and i do all the right things I even cleaned and made everything you know, PG-13. Um, and then 20 minutes before we're about to record, I can hear him in the corridor. and like, hey, guys, do you need access? They're like, no, no, we're good. I'm like, I'm glad I was home for this. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, top right. priority. It's, it's right. all good. Uh, white, you know, white people problems. First world problems. <laughs> um, all right, Misfits, here we are. If, you've, if it's your first time round for an interval, this is what we do more or less every season. It's about season season five of the season episode five of the season we take a break there's no scheduled topic we just riff on whatever's going on in life and the universe and whatever's going on for us at times so welcome to the misfit interval grab some popcorn get a chalk top maybe a, a bottle of sprite or something and sit down what the chill hell out is a chalk top i knew this was i knew okay okay so okay oh, we, i don't know if we're gonna dive straight into australia versus the us but let's do it so here's a little tidbit. Um, a a chalk top is when you would go to the cinema um, and you're going through the snack counter to get your popcorns and your drinks and all these sorts of <laughs> things. There was these uh, like ice creams in uh, a little cone and they've been dunked in That's like a chocolates. Drumstick. Uh, well, okay, but see over here, a drumstick is is something else particular. It's like a cornetto yeah, a drumstick, drumstick here is also a chicken leg. Um, yes, but, yes, uh, I can agree there. No, it's also what you're talking about. Right, and so so this would be a chalk top for us, and they're, okay. they're infamous. Um, I actually like that name more, to be honest with you, because it makes way more sense. It's not right? even shaped like a drumstick. We just make more sense down here on this side of the Pacific. <laughs> yeah, you can um, tell it how it is. Yeah, right, right, right. All right, so you said Joyce has got some questions or topics or things lined up for us. So what's yes. what's on the agenda? Yes, Joyce is running this show. So she has uh, five questions for us each that are the most Ooh. commonly asked questions by our population to the other. And oh, wow. um, okay. that's, I asked her a couple of different ways we could take the episode and that's where she wanted to take it. So we've got a wide range of questions, even if it's just five each, it's, it's quite interesting. <laughs> um should we just jump into it or let's what jump, let's jump into it let's jump into <laughs> okay. it okay okay uh so th this is americans asking questions about australia and australians okay <laughs> are kangaroos and koalas everywhere <laughs> i feel so bad that that's number one <clears throat> yes <laughs> 
No way. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> like, get out. They're just hanging from grocery store fucking rafters. Like, they, stop. They're bouncing down the street. Like, I have... Uh, People I ride them pet, to work. Yeah. I have a pet koala. Um, no, all right. Okay, so I'm going to dis- uh, I'll disappoint all of my fellow Australians by, by telling you the truth. So, um, so okay, so in, in major cities, no. You know what I mean? It, it's mm-hmm. it's sort of the same as asking a Canadian, like a moose everywhere or like a grizzlies everywhere. You know, it's right. so in um in obviously in regional areas, like yeah, you'll you'll come across kangaroos. As a matter of fact, in the in the town where I grew up in Singleton, which was a blue mo- blue collar mining town, um, three hours north of Sydney. Uh regional mostly it's known the the hunter valley is the region where it is so the hunter valley is known for vineyards and for mining right okay so a lot of farmland a lot of you know wide open plains and all that sort of stuff a lot of bush a lot of bush yep. um mm-hmm. and of normally of an evening of about sunset like yeah you can see like packs of kangaroos bouncing along so much so and so common that they're a traffic hazard folks <laughs> Okay. Because right. like anything because I don't know if you disappointed anybody because I think the Americans were straight up thinking it's one way or the other, right? Right, like, right, 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 right. right. C- kind of like the same thing like you said with Canadians or like us here with fucking wolves or you yeah, know whatever yeah, whatever yeah, the yeah. hell it is. It's like it, it that's the image that I get when I just like I- I'm not making an actual educated fucking right. thought on the yeah. thing. I'm like, "Oh shit. They're either everywhere or they're nowhere." Like right, and, right, right. I think a lot of people think that. So I think you just, I think you. So, so regional areas, definitely. But the reason, so the reason why there are traffic hazards, so here's a fun fact that you may not know, is that y- your average dude bro might be six foot. Like a, a standing, fully grown male kangaroo is closer to seven foot um, and is pure muscle everything about it so if you think about the way they move like their rump their their tail their legs everything is pure muscle right and so uh, a pack i should know the collective of a kangaroo um but a, a pack of kangaroos like bouncing along at full speed should you hit one in your car you need a new car really right. for, for real so anything short of a four-wheel drive with like bull bars your car's fucked, you know, and that's and that's you call not... a pack of kangaroos a mob because oh! of their violent nature. <laughs> Interesting. So there you go. We Interesting today, but that's um that can not range uncommon. up to several dozen. Are you uh, fucking yeah, yeah. no? Because they travel in, they travel in packs, and so uh, the thing is, like, I if don't you, care. Make your pack like five right. or six. Don't no, not bro. fucking. Oh my god. So that's the thing, and it, and so if you. Uh, to an everyday are Australian. they actually violent though or is that no just... no 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 not at all it's like no, not because seeking they're... it out or not, it, of course yeah. not they're they okay. want to they want to stand on a plane and nibble on grass and bounce around and be left alone like yeah okay right. sure right um but have the... you seen the clip that's recently viral of this dude just getting fucking wiped out by a kangaroo I what have to find it to you and send it to you. So uh, he's just coming around this fence. He's obviously being chased down. He might have provoked right. him or whatever the fuck right, it right, is. Right. But well, he's coming around right. the fucking fence. And this fucking thing just tackles his ass, dude. Just tackles his ass. And he managed to kind of like fight it off and throw it away from him. But like in the comments, every single comment is exactly what you're saying. And it's from Australia. Hey, an Australian here. That's not fucking funny. Those things are made out of pure muscle and can yeah. literally shred your guts they in seconds. Fuck, they will fuck you up. Like their feet are <laughs> however big and they've got obviously nails because they need to grip and bounce along. But so the, to wrap to wrap up this little anecdote, like if you said to the everyday Australian, like, oh shit, like a hit a roo, the first question they're going to ask is, how's your car? Because it, it's... The roo's fine? The roo... Depending on how fast you hit it, but they're like, again, right. like they're big enough, <laughs> yeah. you know, okay. um, okay. yeah. So wow. it's not like you're hitting bunnies or hitting a dog. Like you're hitting, yeah. you're hitting. Okay. That's mass. deer for us here. Right. That's, that's right, right, deer. Right. And your car is not fucked up. It's just 
not pretty afterwards. Right. You know what I mean? Because those guys probably aren't <laughs> pure muscle. <laughs> so to, to answer the original question, Americans, um, in regional and suburban areas, yes, you will find free range kangaroos. You can find free range koalas in urban centers. Not at all. You know, because okay. it's right. There's people and things. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Fair. Yeah. That should have been that should have been a fucking common sense thing, but Not like that apparently point. that's the number one ask question. Wow. Yeah. And, and okay. she took me through a couple different filters too. So like that that should be pretty accurate to her statistics. Um mm. Okay. Um <laughs> God, these questions. Well, and for those who don't know, Joyce is our AI assistant. So yes, if, yes, if, if, I if we've got, you know, tasks or admin yeah. or SEO stuff to run in the background, yeah. we just give it to Joyce and Joyce can take care of it. So we thought we'd name her. Is it true that everything in Australia is trying to kill you? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Let's see if there's, I think we've got the top three or five or, or if there's a top five, we've got the top three or four deadly snakes in the world. Same with spiders. Already done. Snakes are a no-go for me. Uh, reptiles are up there. Sharks. Let's not forget about sharks. Um, but the big, one, yeah, the big ones that tourists focus on are sharks, snakes, and spiders. Yeah, because um, they're all terrifying. Okay. <laughs> like the, the, the spiders and fucking snakes over here, even in the worst areas, are like fucking tra like hand-sized tarantulas that will just run away from you. That's that's like right. that's like maybe the worst in terms of spiders that we've got. Snakes, I mean, you got diamondbacks and you've got a few, yeah. in, you know, and kind of uh, rattlesnakes and this right and in marsh areas. You got water moccasins, really fucking deadly shit. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But at the same time, you don't have giant fucking desert snakes that can move at thirty miles an hour. <laughs> you right. Well, know? we've got like king king browns are quite common here, and they're pretty venomous. Um, red belly black snakes. They're pretty venomous. Uh, okay, spiders, but put yeah. it into context then too, because like you were saying for the koalas and the kangaroos, how much of is an, is it an issue yeah. in city areas and like really populated areas? Are you still gonna find snakes okay. and um, snakes? No, because they like you know they like quiet. They like sun. Mm -hmm. They like things they can actually hunt and kill, and you know rats mm -hmm. and rodents and things like that. So normally bush. Again, where I grew up. Um, brown snakes and even yeah, brown snakes and red belly black snakes were a not common but a concern because I remember yes, I, I remember um the first house we lived in, our neighbors were sort of two two or three properties sort of behind us. And so between us was just like scrub, like bush, mm -hmm. like non-developed sort of land, right? Okay. And anytime we were gonna go over, um the sort of warning that was shouted from the window was like, just look, just be careful and look out for snakes and stuff. Or if you had boots outside, you would tap them out first just to make sure no spiders or anything and sort of crawled in there because yeah, that it's warm and cozy and dry. So, you know, um, nope. so, so the thing is, so the thing is like snakes, snakes in city areas, no, like really unlikely. Spiders probably a bit more likely because they get in everywhere. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah. it's not like those other, you know, viral clips too. You see though, where it's like, I, I and I can't, and I can't remember it. No, like I, it, I know what you're talking about. Like you turn was, over like a panel in an old shed or something, and then just, and just a covered. sea, an ocean yes. of no covered. There was also a clip too, and I can't and. and uh, Fuck, I may be completely wrong. It might have been in South America, but I really feel like it was Australia where there was like a uh influx of a certain kind of web weaver spider and a fucking town got like taken the fuck over. No, I think that it, was us actually. Okay, I that's what I mean. I really do it think it was familiar. us. Oh, because funnel webs funnel webs are quite uh, are quite deadly as well. Um they might not kill you, but they'll definitely fuck you up and make you sick. And, uh, and they can get pretty big, right? Can't they? Funnel webs can. Funnel webs and trapdoors oh. can. There's also oh, um, trapdoors. No. Dude. Yeah, yeah. And then no. there's black. Um, oh no, no, no. There's redback spiders, which you call black widows. So redbacks oh. are 
uh, those are bad. To, those are bad. Yeah, and here, they're quite. They here are they quite can kill your ass. Here. Yeah, yeah, they're quite. They're quite common <laughs> over here. Um, but and and again, I think. Yeah, but the ones you normally see in in like corners of apartments and stuff are normally like a daddy long legs or something. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like they're just okay, okay, there to kill bugs. So unless you you really go looking for them or you're climbing under houses, you should. So you have safe. a lot more potential for disaster, but it's yes. not like you guys are walking around with fucking revolvers expecting to get jumped by a kangaroo or fucking no. a trident, thinking that you know every time you serve somebody's gonna get eaten. But he's. <laughs> you know? No, that that's true. That's true as well. But here's also, um, I guess it's, it's it's sort of the the logic and the culture of being a farm kid, or because you know, you grow you grow up in a situation where you sort of know what's dangerous, and so you've been warned or forewarned of like just be aware of this, just be aware of that, like common sense. Like sharks, sharks is a good one, right? Mm-hmm. So anytime mm-hmm. there's a, a report of a shark attack on a beach or some shit like that. No, and because I'm, I used to work down on Bondo Beach, right? And and I'm probably about 10, 15 minutes away from Bondo Beach. Um, and so any of these sort of reports where like shark attack X, Y, and Z, it's like, cool, you know, re- you do a quick calculation, like what time was it? Because normally sharks feed or come into shallows to feed around sunset or sunrise, right? Because that's where they're chasing the fish, <laughs> right? So surfers know don't surf alone at these times because you're more prone, you know, to potentially like, like, okay. right. So little common sense things like that, that are probably part of Australian culture or even like farm culture. If you grew up on a farm, like, you know, that certain animals mm-hmm. behave a certain way and like the guns are kept here and whatever else It's just a sort of safety and logic around it or a culture. <laughs> right, right? right. So if you hear about a shark attack, it's normally, normally someone doing something stupid on their own, when they kind of shouldn't have been, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So yep. Yep. yeah. Yeah. Fair. Fair. Okay. So everything is trying to kill you, but you just, you got to be a real dumbass to let it. But that's what makes Australians so fucking cool, Brody. It's like, we can just take it. Yeah. That's fair. <laughs> that's, fucking, that's fair. So that's fair. Bye. Uh, I, I almost made a really bad Steve Irwin joke. Um, you guys. She's, yeah, not no, every one yeah. of you can take it. Not, not touche, touche. Yeah, stingrays, uh, stingrays will fuck you up. Um, jellyfish, we got jellyfish here. They'll fuck you up. Yeah, we um, do too, but not like the kind that, like, yeah, you're gonna not just like box jellyfish, from which you. will have yeah. you vomiting for a week. Yeah. Um. Okay. Number three. What's the difference between Australian and American accents for you? Like, oh, for I, me, I, I, I yeah, I like, I kind of like that question. That, yeah. yeah, that's good. That's good. Actually, we'll flip it around for a minute because, like, I've all the questions have been Australian based. So, like, for yeah, Americans, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What, what's the difference in an Australian accent for you it's guys? It's so funny because I think I think we have. Sorry, we have... I should ask. The, I'll ask that properly. Hey, Broads, okay. what's the difference in an Aussie accent compared to you Yanks over there? Like, why do why do you sound so weird? Because we sound normal. So, like, what's up with that, mate? Uh, we misfits ps we have talked about this i think interval last season we did right. kind of the same thing and that was one you, you, it's a commonly asked question yeah like what do we think of each other's accents <clears throat> so for me it's <clears throat> it's a little different i feel um i i feel like i've been advantaged i've talked to tons of people all over the world so i know it's really dialect based you know what i mean that right. you're going to find a ton of people that sound really Australian. You're going to sound, and then you're going to find a ton of people that don't, or you can't really put your finger on it. You know what I mean? And you go, oh yeah, that that's like, there's little twangs or this kind of thing. That's it's the it. same thing as anybody yep. here in the States. Like you can come from anywhere in the States. You travel enough of those States though, and you lose all accent. Like mm-hmm. it, it, it just kind of becomes this like meld. And, and this is the way I look at it. I don't, I don't, I think if anybody's around enough dialect, they they have none, you know, like, because you kind of absorb language and interaction on that basis. So for me, hearing Australians, it's the same thing. It's like, am I hearing a really like Southern Australian or am I hearing somebody from the city? Am I, you know, those kind of things. Well, then what, okay, if you're in a, if you're in a bar, you can hear a whole bunch of 
chit chat, chit chat, mm -hmm. chit chat. But then something's going to catch your ear, right? And then you're going to go, hmm, you're from, I think you're from Oz. So what is it about that? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to sound like such a piece of shit. No, no, no. <laughs> This, uh, friends, there's, the, it, the, you guys have a almost like lazy way of pronunciating a ton yeah. of shit that almost just kind of sounds like a one word yeah just a one solid fucking word sentence and it's like yeah. holy shit you're from australia okay like and and it's bizarre too because again i've listened to enough of it that like you it's not unclear i'm not saying it's unclear or hard yeah. to understand i'm just saying it's like almost a lazy way of it's, like, it's accurate you say a bunch of shit with one or two words like and they're all pieces of different words it's like what the fuck out of those two words mean 15 other words and it makes sense so like it, it shouldn't but it does so yeah that's what would stick out <laughs> to me like, is i like, heard that kind Gallen of Savi. yeah yeah exactly yeah <laughs> exactly. For sorry for a translation is how are you going this afternoon <laughs> yeah 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 no see no way <laughs> that's funny yeah okay yeah now for americans? you yep. uh, americans allowed <laughs> <laughs> yeah we are we American, are. in generally speaking, allowed and and like you were saying, if you if you listen a little bit, you can sort of place, um, sort of place a region. I won't say mm -hmm. a direct mm -hmm. town, um, yeah, yeah. or anything like that. But you can you know you can sort of you can generally tell north from south, um, east from west. You know yep. that sort of thing. So there's shout out to Tyler who's from Minnesota. So it's yep. a very very specific accent in Minnesota, eh? Yep. Um, but yeah, it's generally, generally, generally louder. Gen that's that's mm -hmm. what it is. And there's and there's there's normally a twang as well, especially like on the east coast. And it, and it really it really grates here. Like so, it's it's sort of it's interesting. You describing an Australian accent as lazy because it, it's it's accurate. Um, be an acting nerd for a minute in terms of dialect we don't use a lot of mouth space and so if if you took english like standard english and then made it more lazy in the mouth you've got australian eh, mate like you know because we all kind of talk like this and a bit of a drawl and you now how's yowing and if you made it even lazier you'd get new zealand so it's like how's it going bro like you're right sweaty like it it becomes like, yes so yes the, the, right but then to go to America, it's sort of like you got to give yourself more mouth space and talk like this and like really like a lot of jaw, a lot of like top palate space. And like, do, do you have an American accent? I don't have. I'm not I'm gonna. Not. I'm not gonna attempt to do it. <laughs> <that. laughs> I was thinking the same thing. I was like, should I? Tra no, I'm not gonna because do it. Because you probably like travel all the way around the, the continent. Um, you know, it what? would be our most viral clip. Oh, it'd be terrible. It's terrible. Um, Linda, Linda, who we had on last season, obviously is a voice and dialect coach. Like it, she <laughs> was great. She was like, <laughs> she, she won't mind. Um, she was like a, a, a puppet and you could pull the string on her back and go like, be like, you know, Louisiana and like pull the thing and she'd do the accent and you go do this and like do the accent, do like New York Bronx. And she'd pull the, she, do it all just like pull it out um i love that that, shit. that was really, really yeah yeah really cool it's all like phonetics and vocalization and and all that sort of shit like really really fascinating but yeah in general um australians are, are lazy in the mouth and americans take up a lot more energy and room and tend to be a lot louder okay all right that's mm. fair that's fair too i i can't i can't argue at all <laughs> not even a little bit because it's almost like I'll, I'll I'll say this, and this isn't a trash on Americans. I'm not no. say, saying anything like that, but uh, we we tend to compete in conversation a lot more than a lot of other cultures do. Uh, conversation tends to be an 
a transaction in most other places. Whereas here, like I said, it's competitive base where it's like, am I saying the coolest thing? Am I the smartest guy in the room? Is everybody hearing me? Is everybody, uh, and you get it growing up your whole life. And I mean, seriously, even at like family parties and shit, you'll be talking about uh, something that happened to you. Right. And, and it's not like you or I, where I can walk you through an entire experience. You may have a question, but you're not going to interrupt me with a story of your own. And, you know right. what I mean? And, it, and it's almost like that no matter where you go. I, I've been all over the country. I've been in, you, you know, 10 plus different states and it's a very common theme. And I think that's where the loudness translates, you know, cause it's almost a competition. I've got, I've got to be the one that's being heard in the conversation. It's fucking annoying. It's what it is. <laughs> All right, this is this is Australia's number one question for Americans. Ooh, why are portions so large in America? Yes. Uh, yes. Fuck, dude. I, I mean, that has to do with obesity. I mean, I, you got to look at the and, demographic. And, and as a sort of like corollary to that, like why is why is like soda and like sugar in everything? Like everything is soda and sugar is in absolutely everything. Oh, it kills me. It kills me. Um, it's just the culture. I, I, I hate to like boil it down to that simple of an answer for you guys, but like it, uh, all my Australian friends, that's the truth. Like it is really just a perpetuated culture. And I think it, again, it, it's funny. I think it originated primarily in that competitive nature. You look at Americans on any level, and I'm even talking food, people. I'm even talking fucking food. And they said, how can I make it faster? How can I make it cheaper? How can I make it fucking more mm -hmm. addictive? How could blah, 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 all of these things. And then just look at what you've created. You've got a fucking monster of a society that literally cannot go one meal without. And this is not a joke. So I drink I drink spring water and really a lot of that. I primarily only drink teas. If I went in there, I think we have one soda in there, right? And it's the half cans. That's got 25 grams of sugar in it. Mm. A half can, people. A half can. of That's insanity. And it is normal. It is complete. This is not a fucking joke. Swear to you. If you didn't know this, it is not a joke for 90% of the people I know to not have drank water in multiple days. Yeah, that, that's a bit scary. It's fucking honest. terrifying. It's and terrifying. I'm saying, that, I'm saying that as a like espresso addict, but like, oh, I but drink even look at the water to compensate. Let's go there for a second because look, mm. even it, it's funny too because I I will always get that argument from people that kind of are stuck in really shitty health habits or you know things like that and you know they'll always say oh yeah well everybody drinks coffee or everybody does this yeah but if you look at my Starbucks coffee as opposed to your your cafe made espresso yeah my Starbucks coffee has almost ninety grams of sugar in it. It has how many different ingredients within each of those fucking dyes. It has all of the fucking things within the flip. All blah, blah, blah. It's a much different fucking, it's a much different thing. You could drink probably as much coffee as your average American drinks. And if it's your coffee, not see any of the detrimental, horrible side effects that we would. As a, as a quick comparison, um, mm -hmm. Starbucks in australia is a joke flopped right well yeah. that, that too but it, it's just regarded as like the fuck is this like what's the cream and the syrup and the sugar and whatever else like we again like a cultural sort of thing we were lucky to have greek and italian immigrants who came over who said fuck this we're gonna have a cafe um and so yep. our we're still a young country but like our culture was we understood and appreciated good espresso uh mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm stuck and it's two things i think that and the fact that we're not super big on franchises over here over here yeah 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 where absolutely it's, it's not a we c don't really trust it we're kind of cynical of that whole thing and sneer at it like the independent mom and pop shop will always get the foot Good. traffic before like a big that's how it should be a big brand you that's know how what it mean? should be that's how it um, should be and you would think you would think with again 
even with the competitive nature of Americans, <clears throat> that the entrepreneurial spirit of Americans, that that would kind of be the same incentive. I'm going to support local. I'm going to, hmm. and you see it all the time. It's like a fucking slogan. You know, people fucking tote it all over the place. It's not a thing. You know what I mean? Hmm. Like if you, if there's a McDonald's down the road, you are hundred percent going there before you're going to a sandwich shop owned by a friend. I know it's, fucking fight me americans like i know for a fact like i know yeah, so interesting yeah th to answer the big portions question that's simply it the food's addictive it's highly processed it's it, it, it's a shitty culture based around fucking this drive to get more and more and more so it, you know you find that even in the food and it's yeah it's a bummer it's a bummer mm. Yeah. Explain it's not also good. while we're here, like explain yeah. tipping. Explain tipping to us. Shut the fuck up. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, this number one second question was what's the deal with tipping in the United States? What is the deal? Um yeah. What's, so, what, so what do you mean? Do you not tip? Um, okay, so the the the, the short answer is no, because we have an award wage, which is from what I understand more equitable than what most Americans are paid as a base wage. Like there's okay. award wages for all sorts of different industries. So okay. it's from, okay. Again, from my outside layman's understanding, it's like tips are supposed to substitute for a service wage where Australian mm -hmm. businesses or Australian government took the approach of no, no, we'll pay a wage we'll mandate a wage, which is reasonable for these industries. So you're not, don't have to rely on being supported by tips. So it's interesting because, um, Obviously, I've done my time in hospo, and you can, Interesting. you can, you can, I've done my time in hospo, and you can mark a distinct shift between back in the days where like people were still paying with cash for things mm -hmm. to now where everything's mostly card based. So like getting a tip on anything is, is nigh on impossible. Um, right. So in Australian culture, generally you'll tip out of curse, courtesy or generosity. It's okay. not it's not a social um must it's not it's not a it's not a cultural must and i remember so that's that's the way it works here if you had a nice time you might leave a couple of extra bucks if you've gone to dinner you know four or five people bottle of wine some meals and whatever else like throw 10 12 so you aren't cal you, you aren't calculating nah, man, 25 not it's 30 you know, percent and, and, of and your you check and it would be totally reasonable to go boom pay 100 percent of the total and just and leave you know you're not going to get yelled at screamed at no one's nope. going to feel bad about and it and you don't and you don't at all feel like there would be any negative st like this motherfucker no never tips no oh my um God. It's, interesting and it's and, i didn't even and know this was a thing you started to say that as i was reading the question i'm like no fucking way dude what yeah yeah <laughs> and you know it's uh, little things like the price the price is advertised as the price is paid you know, that's, that's the way that it is. I remember. So what do look, you want to know? <laughs> no, but I mean, because here's a, like, sort of explain the culture behind it. Cause I have, I have like some cursory knowledge here and there. And I'll also, my experience when I was uh, 15, 15 ish, and we took a family trip to the States. And I, I do remember like anytime, yeah, you end up at a Denny's for breakfast. Cause where else the fuck are you going to go in mm -hmm. Anaheim? Yeah. Before you go to Disneyland. Yep. Um, I remember my old man, like you're sitting there, we've all had whatever we've had. And then he's doing the total. And he's like, oh shit, got a tip. And so you're doing the calculation mm -hmm. ev every time of, of what this is going to be. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's fucking intense. You go to, um, <laughs> I, I, I mean, seriously, and you'll get fucking, you'll get shanked <laughs> for, you know, being that guy. Like uh, mm. I get crucified at times because I, it's funny. I'm, I'm in, I look, we're moving in the same direction where the minimum wage is, you know, a, a little more on the universal side for living, right? Like right, you, you can right. make it, you know, regardless of what job you have. Um, <clears throat> that's the intention. Uh, I know it doesn't always work. So tips shouldn't be as uh, much of a necessity as they are in mm -hmm. the, the perception of it, but that's how a lot of people do end up doing well right in a server's position or in things like that or 
it is the tips and it is because of the culture and it's so strange because i didn't know that I, I literally i'm not even joking you i did not know this was a not a thing everywhere else i would have been tipping oh no every like, motherfucker in australia every you, everybody would have got you get a tip you get a tip you get a you, tip you guys are the only ones like it's uk no you know it, it, and like i said it's fucking intense and the reason that i say that and i'll qualify this is because you go to a fast food joint where you from the place that you order to the last window talk to maybe two people for a fucking 30 seconds at a time and yep. they still ask you for a 20 percent tip Oh, what 20%. do you wow. fuck? That's the standard. That's the fuck. Wow. Standard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 20%. And it's like, dude, you're insane. You fucking made my, f you did your job and you handed yeah. me my shit. Why am I tipping you? I, I just, I don't understand. I couldn't tell you guys what it stems from, where it comes from or why, but that is, it, it's, yeah, it's a real thing. It's down to, you, you won't go to the grocery store and have your grocer ask for a tip, but no. listen to this. There are, there are places that you have gas attendants. So they, they pump your gas, right? you, you tip your gas. And a little something, you go to the hotel it's and the bellboy brings though? your luggage up, so you, a little something. It, Ed, by the time that you've gotten to where you're fucking going, you have tipped over like five hundred fucking dollars to just every yeah. fucking person that you've interacted with. And look, I I I probably sound like a cynical dickhead to everybody that doesn't mind the whole tipping aspect, but to me, it's like you said, it's like I know now with a little bit of fucking research that it, you know minimum wage they try to make a livable wage, so it, it, you are now making twice what your work is valued at and that's not me being a dick i'm not i'm not being a dick i do like you said if i come into an establishment and you i i can tell you're going out of your way for me of course i want to leave a tip yeah of course yeah if if i come into a restaurant right and it's not just you grabbed a high chair for my baby you flipped it over for me you kind of helped me set it up in the moment you're sitting there you're you're talking to my kids you're making their experience a good thing Fuck yeah. I would love to tip you. I, I would absolutely. And I'll tip you well. But tip. fucking the expectation of it, I couldn't explain to you. There's, I don't know. I, there's, there's, there's a little, there's a cultural gem behind this as well, which I think also explains the difference is <clears throat> I have noticed in my time in Hospo that American customers tend to have the expectation of because I'm paying and customer is king, like I'm, I'm going to leverage this. Like and they yeah, have yeah. this sort of entitlement. Like when I was working in bars or like, or, or cafes or whatever, I was like, nice cafes, like sit down sort of restaurants and whatever. There was this expectation of because I'm present and I'm paying for this experience. Like I am entitled to X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and, mm -hmm. and, and like at the end of that, they'll pay and they might tip because they're entitled. Right. Yeah. And this is, this is something else in Australian culture. I can't really speak for the rest of the world, even though I have worked in other places in the world. Um, and it's been consistent where, th so this is an aspect of Australian culture that just doesn't fucking fly. You know what I mean? Like, so mm -hmm. you walk in, it's, it's sort of the opposite. Like you walk into a cafe or restaurant or wherever else you're walking into someone else's establishment, someone else's home, someone else's business. So there's a level of, it's more reciprocal. Like, sure, you're a customer and Respect you're paying for X, given. Y, and Z, but like, you're in my house. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. So the menu is what the menu is and we will, we will be professional and we will treat you with respect and with service and with courtesy and all these sorts of things. So, and you can appreciate that. And so it's, it's much more of a reciprocal, hospitable experience where it seems, and they're probably like the bad apples that I'm singling out here, they're the the customers that were pricks and just entitled motherfuckers that it's this it's this transactional like i'm not and not specifically american but like i'm paying therefore i'm entitled to it's like yep. no you know yeah, and it's no. been like the yeah and, and like i said my standard is the only thing I feel entitled to is the service that I'm paying for. And, and I don't expect, I don't expect you to smile at me or ask me how my fucking day was, or tell me that you've got fucking kids that are the same age. I don't give two flying fucks. 
if you want to be kind and have that come i'm here i'm I'll, I'll i'll show up too you know what i mean but it's like it's not an expectation for me not the same so and i would like to add that i feel like that i think my big issue with it is because i would love for you to show up like that on your own incentive not for me to tip you for being that way right and then also vice versa I don't want to show up to work and dance monkey fucking dance so I can get a little fucking extra check. Fuck yeah. you. I'm here doing my job. Yeah. If if you want to be kind, then go for it. But it, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It, this, this like, because like I said, I think the exchange in all sides of it, the expectation is what fucks the whole thing up. And everybody's like, damn, this is. This is weird. I don't know who should be entitled to what. <laughs> like, yeah. Shit. And like going, going, going cashless is a thing. Like yes. I look, I miss. And you got to answer twenty questions on a goddamn card reader now, so I know these wow, motherfuckers. Right, right, like, right. If I, and that's the thing. You'll you'll swipe. You'll insert. You'll do whatever. And it'll be like you know, sign your name. Fucking, do you want cash back? Also, hey, would you like to leave a tip? And the thing is, there's fucking yeah. memes about it all over the place. It, I don't think people mean to, but like, because they're trying to walk you through the process of their fucking transaction thing. They're they're just sitting there staring at you and they're going, well, did you answer the question? Did yeah, you right. did you get that question? Yeah. There should be one more question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah, you're yeah, just yeah. like sitting here like, bro, I the know what just, it says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not fucking is there a no tip option motherfucker <laughs> it sucks yeah. it's yeah because it, it was it was it was no like at the end of like working at the bar end of the shift and like you sort of tally everything up and you split it between the crew and everything else so having just like that that's a that was a nice feeling like sure you get paid but you got that little extra play mm -hmm. money mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. that was yeah, always fuck. cool i'm sure and, it's nice but shit it's weird <laughs> Well, yeah, like, uh, that's the thing, again, like, as, as an Australian, like, having worked, like, in London and places like that, like, it was a little, it was a little something extra. It wasn't like, you need to tip so I can pay rent, you know? It, right, right. It wasn't that. You know? Right. I knew what my base wage was. I knew if I, like, you just kept, I need these hours, get this money, I'll have that at the end of the week. Yeah. This is an extra. It was a pleasantry. It mm. was, uh, yes. it was, yeah. It was a courtesy. I, it... Should be. <laughs> <laughs> All um... right. So we, we solved that. <laughs> okay, and this since we did three for Australians, okay. we'll do three for Americans. This is another question that you you guys commonly ask: Is the American high school experience really like the movies, where everyone gets shot? <laughs> <laughs> those, those are the newer movies. Too Come soon. on, <laughs> those Too are the soon. newer movies. Too dude. Okay, Sorry, friends, you qualify what you feel that question is. Yeah, no, yeah, it's it's all right, it's. It is every every teen movie or or um, series. It's like jocks, nerds, cheerleaders. There's nothing in between. It's not like that for you. It, no. it wasn't clicky, I, kind of. I guess is the right word. Is that the right word? Click. Yeah. Yeah. yeah clicky. Yeah. Clicky. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you yeah, sure? Like, oh, like... I'm. Wow, it's 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 almost embarrassing how much it is. Like, it, it, and wow. it's strange too. Yeah, looking back as a grown adult, you're like, wait, is it though? And like the homecoming, this is this is a perfect example, and anybody in America will know the homecoming dance was exactly like that. Well, you okay, didn't have back up, back up. What, communal... okay, back up. What is okay. a homecoming dance? Because we don't have them, or we might have them under a different name. Interesting. So homecoming is the first home game of the football season. Then no, we absolutely do not have. And we celebrate that with a is. dance and a celebration and a homecoming parade. king and queen and homecoming queen. Yep. And a parade. And a yes, parade. I'm not fucking with you with floats and everything. Y'all are weird. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, you tape the movies. First the home ex... game of the season. Yeah, that's it. That's this gives a fuck okay sure no you do you you do you do you i 
no prom or anything for you guys? What so what is have, prom? Okay, what we is prom? We might have okay. We we would have um. There's we might have a an end of year. Okay, year twelve. Um, high school goes to year twelve, then you graduate, you go to uni or college right. or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. before that, there's year ten. So if you don't do the final two years of high school, go to year ten. You might okay. You might have a senior ball at the end of the year. So okay. to sort of half celebrate that shit. Um, you do have a senior formal at like year 12. So boom, you finish high school, you know, you do that. It's not, it's just like a nice dinner somewhere. It's, That's not, it. like a, it's not like a dinner, a dance, a party like after. Maybe, okay, maybe a bit of a, maybe a bit of a dance. Um, I d there's definitely no voting on Kings and Queens and most popular, like no. whatever. Nah, man. Nah. Come on. You don't have no, a no. popularity competition? Bro, you'd get, you would get ridiculed and just roasted as fuck in Australia. Um, I, I don't, like, the kids today might be doing it. I don't know. But, like, when I went through high school, absolutely not. I met, um, yeah, there's always an after party. There's always an after party, you know, or yeah. several that you've got okay. to hit up. Um, okay. Good stories about that. Uh, but I do, I do remember actually my senior ball because I took, Oh man, I must, I must have been the man in high school because I took an older girl who wasn't from our school. Oh yeah, fact, like, totally right. So she was first, yeah. first, she was first year uni, um, yeah. and I even had to get the principal to like sign off on like some permission slip and whatever to allow her to come and whatever else. So while everyone brought like the local trash, <laughs> <laughs> I got to ask. You I got brought to ask Cinderella. My girl, I got to ask my girl, Marissa, and said, hey, I know you don't go to my school. I don't know many people here. Do you want to come to my senior ball? And she said, yes. And she wore something pretty. And I went and picked her up and then went to the ball. So I brought, I brought a foreign girl, um, a foreign older girl to like my high school senior ball. And like, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's how it is. That's a flex. <laughs> yeah. And then we ended up, she was my first ever real girlfriend sort of shortly after that. So that was definitely that was my flex. Thing. Definitely yeah. flex. Because you can get them to the dance, but are are you really hanging out with them, or was right? that a little pity trip and, and, just so they could go to the new school? But like I was seventeen, and she was nineteen. She had her own car, and she had her own place, and I'm like, oh yeah, you you were killing it. Nice. You're killing it. Yep. I, I peaked in high school, Brody. <laughs> <laughs> oh stop! But uh, yeah, no, it wow. it, re it okay, really so is. Okay, so homecoming. So homecoming. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, homecoming. You, you, the dance floor. Shit you not. Corner is jocks. Um or middle of the floor is the jocks and the the pop kids, the popular yeah, yeah. kids, um, all of those kids congregated together. And there might be an outlier from each group, right? Where mm -hmm. there's like the artsy kid that has a brother that's a jock or you know, those kind of right, things. Right, right. But that feeds exactly into the stereotype we're talking about here, right? Like, it really genuinely is fucking perks being a wallflower on a, like, that's wow, man. It, it, it. And look, I'll, I'll say this. I'll, I'll say this. I have said this about my experience there. I dropped out my second year of high school. Couldn't, couldn't even make it in two full years. Um, but what I learned within that little, like, system and you know dichotomy and all the different just kind of concepts that people were trying to push on to each other mm -hmm. it i didn't have to be a part of any of it you know what i mean like it well, and I, yeah go on. i got i got really lucky because i really was and i've talked about this a lot and i think anybody that i run into would agree i was just that infamous kid like i was I knew everybody. I knew everybody. And I had hung out with you at least one or two times, but I did not subscribe to anybody's shit. You know, mm. I was my own little fucking weird bird. <laughs> and that's, uh, it served me well. And I'm lucky, you know, for that. I, I do, I do know a lot of people that were trying to figure out who they were and you know that kind of thing and they didn't have the same reception you know so it's it, I, i'm lucky but yeah it is to a t the movies to a t i mean even to the point that like fuck dude you'll get flash mobs in the hallway and shit and random people doing viral tiktoks and it's all of the stuff all of the stuff that you could imagine it's there it's so there. the cliche is true is what you're saying yeah 
Absolutely. Wow. 100%. It's insane to me. The, the, it's so funny to me, too, because I watch him and it's accurate, right? Like, I see the shows mm. and I watch the stuff and I'm like, God damn, you know, obviously dramatized, you know, yeah. like yeah, the yeah. fucking jocks aren't all walking around in their letterman jackets and fucking only dating cheerleaders like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a little ridiculous in that sense. But yeah, you fucking have people that will not be your friend if you're friends with other people or, you know, that kind of fucking dynamic. And it's, it's, uh, it is interesting. Interesting. Uh, or- like, I, like I was saying, though, it is weird to me, too, to look at it from your guys' perspective where, like, everything I see is, like, close enough in line that I don't question it as a drama. You know what I mean? I'm not yeah. like, oh, is this fake that we're presenting to people? It's like, no, this is, we're, <laughs> it is what it is. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm, I guess I'm still processing. Um, but that, it's, it's something to chew on, but it, ne- it neatly sort of brings us to the end of the, end of the episode. Um, there you go, Misfits. Did you learn something? I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> all right so that brings us to the end of episode 55 um brody do you know what's coming up next um why love matters i i saw a sneaky peek no 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 look i i can't i can't show you <laughs> that's you well, all right well <laughs> done you no, the... no drinking today so <laughs> sorry yeah, episode misfits. 55 after episode 55 is wrapped up episode 56 misfits coming up next week we're talking about why love matters and it's a broad sort of conversation about love and attraction and sexual relationships and what this all means i know i've drawn inspiration for this episode from a separate youtube um channel big think um specifically so i'm gonna ha- i'm gonna have to revisit all of that by next week to fill you guys in so you know what we're talking about but it's it's along those lines of like what what attraction actually is like whether it's love and affection and sexual attraction and all these things and how they coalesce to come together rather than thinking of them as as separate things and this oh, I do remember part of it part of it was this myth of how you know that initial sexual attraction like it's great at first in the beginning and then it sort of burns out over time and there's one or two of these lecturers and psychologists and and sexual health advocates who are like no that's not true. It's you can perpetuate it for these for these reasons. So a deeper sort of discussion into that sort of stuff, which I think is cool because it's specifically three three women, three educated professional women, talking about sex and relationships and and how this impacts yeah, we'll you have and, to and your get the link so we can tag it in the. I do, caption. I do, I do. I'm pretty sure it's in that spreadsheet that you didn't look at when you were naming the. <laughs> naming the Good. Spreadsheet. See now you even know because I didn't see the link. For real, for real. <laughs> um. So. Any hot and spicy topics do you think coming up next week, Brody? Um, I'm as always. I'm just kind of excited to explore it for myself. I think it's this is one of the topics that, if I'm being honest, I don't talk about a lot in a personal aspect. You okay. know, I I don't think I've verbalized what it means to me. <laughs> you know, like I don't think I've sat down and said Fair. exactly. Hey, what does love mean to Brody? And uh, I'm excited to play with it. I th- I think that's no pun intended. I think that's a really <laughs> I couldn't help it. I think it's a really good take, and I think it's a really interesting and mature take because part of what is discussed consistently with these three women in this video was how a lot of this is is really just discussion with your partner. And because there's often shame or embarrassment or, or a sense of perceived shame or sense of perceived embarrassment, um, we won't talk about it and we'll avoid it. Like even something as simple as like, what do you like? Or like, and, and owning that or like, what don't you like? You know, cause we're quick to, quick to know what we don't like, but it's like, well, <laughs> what do you like? And if you, if you, if you aren't sure, then you, you probably can't express that to a partner. Right. And mm-hmm. it, so, you know, yeah. um, yeah. let's have that discussion of like, of what it all means. Um, yeah. All right. So there you go, misfits. That's what you got to look, got to look forward to for episode 56. In the meantime, you can find us 
on Spotify. You can find us on the YouTubes. You can go to promisfitspodcast.com and you can find us at Kent's Misfit and shout us a coffee and Brody Needs Glasses and support the channel, which we really appreciate. Shout out to IGU who sponsored this season. Thank you very much. You can also find us on LinkedIn and Facebook. You can find Brody on Facebook and find me more on LinkedIn. Um, yes. <laughs> yes. And, and, are and, and spaces, find Brody yeah. on, on TikToks and the Instagrams because yep. I would push it all into a furnace if I could. So <laughs> promisfitspodcast.com for all the links and all the socials and all the things. In the meantime, I've been Chris. I've been Brody. And you stay classy, Misfits. We'll see you on the next one.